Good day. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a basic drawing. This one happens to be uh, one that uh, we looked at uh, quite a few years ago, but we're going to be back doing it again uh, following the same basic processes, but using AutoCAD 2019 to create it. So again, uh, if you remember back in our first video, we looked at the uh, general setup processes of AutoCAD, and we're going to do the same thing. We hit the Start Drawing already. That was part of the Start menu. If you flip it back over to Start, you get the Start Drawing, and you get a screen that looks like this. Now, it doesn't automatically have the image of the drawing that you're going to be creating on it. To get this to be placed on the screen, what I did is I actually used the Insert drop-down and brought in a raster image reference. And so any JPEG, uh, GIF file, PNG, you know, all the different uh, graphic files can be brought in. This one happens to be called MET Project 1. And so all I did was insert it and, and change the size of the drawing so it's a little bit uh, easier to see. And that's it. So you could actually take a snapshot of your homework project uh, or of, a, of your project and then uh, bring it in and have it on the drawing page uh, directly next to your drawing that you're creating. So we're going to walk through the setup process and we're going to create this particular image. Uh, and so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge and we're going to show you a couple of different ways to work on it because we don't have all the information like the angles and so forth so we're going to have to construct those. And that happens quite often that you end up having to construct the angles. And another point that I wanted to make before we get started, uh, even though this is a, uh, a shape drawing, it makes no difference what the shape happens to be. This easily could have been an architectural shape as opposed to a mechanical shape. So it's not about the object you're creating. It's about learning the process of how to create the drawing. And that's ultimately the key. So no matter what the shape is or what the object is, what you're creating, sure you've got a better interest in one over the other, whether it's a mechanical or architectural project, but the process is the same to create it. It's just the size of the object is different between the two. All right, so let's get started. Remember our four setup items. Start off with the units command, and that's under the big letter A. So under big letter A, drawing utilities and units, we are going to choose decimal units and we've got how many decimal places here looks like two decimal places on our drawing so we'll set that up for two decimal places our second setup is object snap and uh, the polar tracking so polar tracking if we right mouse click on polar tracking it's set up for five degrees at each interval I don't know what the angles are here, so I'm not going to worry about exactly getting the right angles set up in my polar tracking. But as a default, I always set up 5 degrees as my base angle. Uh, in terms of object snap uh, tracking and object snap settings, um, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're set up with the endpoint, the midpoint, the center, intersection, extension, perpendicular and uh, those are the ones that we use the most. If we had a circular object that had to have a tangent, we'd actually set up tangent not in the object snap tracking, but actually just in the object snap pop-up that we would use. So, And to do an object snap pop-up, I'll show you that here in just a second. Our fourth setup item is layers, and it's really important to set your layers up uh, so that way all your information is organized uh, within your drawing. And so we're going to create a couple of layers. Uh, layer number one is going to be our object lines. And we'll hit layer number two, which is going to be uh, center lines. And then layer number three, we're going to put some dimensions on this drawing, so we'll make a dimension layer. So every time I hit a new layer, it creates an, the ability for me to type in the, a new name and it will automatically sort them alphabetically. We're going to want to change the colors of the layers. So center lines I always make green. You'll hear that in all my videos. Uh, dimensions I'll pick and choose what color I, I, I'm feeling for the day. Today it's going to be more of a magenta color uh, on the uh, dimensions. And then uh, object will make uh, white. Object lines we're going to make our line weight a little bit thicker. So we're going to make that 0.5 millimeters same diameter as your mechanical pencil. 
And so utilize your mechanical pencil as a guide, either 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1.3, so forth. And the other setting that we have to have is on our center lines, we would need to make this a center line layer. So when we choose the line type, it only has continuous. We need to load the new center line type to make that happen. And since it's loaded, I'll select it again. And this time, both selections allow us to, uh, to uh, put that in there. So we've now set up our layers. Our object layer is going to be our base drawing layer, so we'll double click on that and it'll auto automatically move that to our current layer. We can close this window and even though there's no save button it automatically saves it. And how do we know for sure? We can always do the drop down here to see what layers we've created. So the object layer is our base drawing layer. So we'll use the line command to get started. Now that we've done our four setup items we have to look at the drawing and figure out how we're going to create it. So it does make sense when you're creating this particular drawing since all the dimensions start at the top to start at the top point because all the dimensions em emanate from that location. But most people like to start in the lower left hand corner of drawings and build their way up and around. We can do both. The dimensions provide us all the data that we need to create the shape uh, and so we can go in either direction. So there is no wrong spot to really start. We will start from the outside and work our way in. Uh, since we don't, we can start with the inside object, but we might end up having to move it uh, or locate it if we don't have the outside shape already pre-created. So I typically start from the outside shape and work my way to the inside details uh, in AutoCAD. So to get started, if we start in the lower left-hand corner, or you know, like I said, it doesn't really matter anywhere, but we'll start here in the lower left-hand corner, we can go and add up all the dimensions, but it does tell us that the overall distance is 4 plus 2.5 inches. And so it's really important to look at the whole drawing because the dimension that might be right here doesn't tell you the whole story. So if you, you draw a line 1.75 plus 2.25 plus 1.25, you don't want to draw four lines here. We want to draw one line across the bottom and then one line vertically. And so to make sure that that's correct, we want to add up all the dimensions, whether it's all the dimensions across the bottom or the two dimensions on the top to get just one single line. So we're in the object layer. We're going to pick the line command and we pick a starting point. It doesn't matter where the starting point is on the screen. We left mouse click on the screen and that begins the line command. Oh, it didn't start. All right, we'll try that again. And there we go we can see that the line command gives us a distance and an angle. So the angle is set up in 5, 10, 15, 20, and it gives us a distance in the white box. The nice thing is, is that we can type in the exact distance and the direction that we need to go. Hence, the term I've created is called point and shoot. We're going to point and we're going to shoot the distance. And so the distance that we need to go is 6.50. And so we type in 6.50 at a zero degree angle. And there we go. We now have a 6.50 inch line. Using your wheel mouse you can magnify and demagnify and that's an important process. So the next one is the difference between 2.5 and 4.75 because 4.75 is the overall dimension, 2.50 is the dimension of where we need to go. So in essence that's going to be a distance of 2.25. And that's pointing straight up. So again, point, type in the distance to shoot the overall value. Now the next one is difficult because we don't, we don't know what this angle is. And so to do this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to build the angle um, through lines as opposed to trying to figure out what the correct angle is uh, that we're working with. So we know that we have to go straight up 90 degrees and we have to go 2.50 and then we have to come over 2.50 now this is an easy one because a 2.50 and a 2.50 and the line that connects the, those and notice that I'm drawing back the diagonal to find the end point so we're going to zoom up a little bit that's an intersection we're looking for a square there's the square that's the end point of that vertical line that we initially drew and so 
what we've done is we've created a right triangle. So 2.5, 2.5, and the hypotenuse. And so technically we could have calculated the value, but in CAD it's almost faster to draw it than it is to calculate out the value and then point and shoot. But it was a 45 degree angle. We'll right mouse click and we'll choose enter to stop the line. So the next line starts at the peak and comes back down. Now what we could do is we could start at the other end now that we're not in the line command. We can actually start here, draw this short segment up, and then build the angled structure again. So we'll start with the line command, go vertical, and so the vertical distance is the, dis is the difference between 4 inches and 4.75, so it's 0.75 perfectly vertical. And again, we have to build the, uh, the angle. So we're going to have to shoot straight up 4 inches. We need to come over to the corner, which is here, and then come back down and find the square. And that square is the end point, and that gives us the, uh, the angular line dimension. Now the problem is that I've got a whole bunch of extra lines. So how do I get rid of them? Well the easiest way to get rid of extra materials is click on them and you'll get these blue boxes. Those are called grips. And if we have grips on the object, and I can select as many objects as I'd like, and just come up and hit the delete key, or you can right mouse click and choose erase. So you could actually go right mouse click and erase. Or you can just hit the delete key on the keyboard. Both will work and erase the object looks pretty looks pretty accurate so now we have to draw the interior shape well to create the interior shape we're going to have to start over 1.5 inches and then up 0.75 to start this lower corner so in essence what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch layers so it's into different colors so you can see what's going on and so we're actually going to go to the center line layer as our construction layer we'll draw a line that starts at the corner and it's going to be 1.75. We're then going to come up 0.75 and that will give us our starting location for this corner. So now I can switch layers and go back to the object layer to draw my object shape. So why did I want to make it a different color? So it makes it easier for you to see what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's grip this. And I'm going to move this a little bit closer so you can see both in the same magnified screenshot. Perfect. So now we're going to change it to the object layer. We're going to choose the line command. And we'll pick the corner that we know that we're going to begin our object with. We're going to draw a straight line 2.25 inches long. We then have to go vertical, and that's the difference between 3 and 4 inches, so that's going to be a vertical 1 inch. Straight up, make sure it says 90 degrees, type in 1, hit enter. Come out, and that's 1.25 on the bottom dimension. And then the difference between 2.5 and 3 is your value for this one. And I want to make sure I'm at directly at 90 degrees. need to come back in that 1.25 and now I've got to go up so this one has a dimension of 1.75 to 2.50 and so that's a, um, a 0.75 distance vertically again making sure all your angles are at 90 degrees or 0 or 180 or and soon to be 270. This is again a half inch. We're going to come straight down. This one's the difference between 1.75 and 3.5. Huh. So that's going to be another 1.75. And then back to the beginning. Now here's a little trick I'm going to show you. So I'm going to magnify up. So this line is still flexible. What I can do is come down and find that endpoint and do what is known as an extension line. And you can see the extension line is the green dotted line that appears. So all I did was I touched it. I didn't pick it. I just came down and touched that end. 
and notice the extension line went away. If I come back and pick the end again or highlight the end, the extension line appears. And so that tells me exactly where I need to be vertically on that horizontal line. And then I missed it because I messed it up. All right, so now how do I fix it? Well, if you draw a line and you don't like what you created, the easiest way to get rid of it is type the letter U on your keyboard and hit enter. That's a short undo. So it's not a big undo, it's a short undo. The big undo will undo the whole command. We don't want that to happen. I just want the short undo to undo the last line segment that I created. So typing the letter U hitting enter gets rid of that. Once I have that green vertical line, that dotted line, and that horizontal line set, now I can pick it and pick the corner. If something doesn't line up, then one of your dimensions did not work. We have to delete this green line here, but if I select this line, ooh, I got lucky, because sometimes that line won't select. So I was going to show you an alternate way to select that line. To select this line is an alternate way. We can do what is known as a window. So what we can do is create a window by picking, by left mouse clicking, uh, off to the left and above. And then you get a blue window. The blue window selects anything that's fully inside the window. If I go the opposite direction, I get a green window. The green window selects anything that I touch or is inside the window. So I want to use a blue window just to select the object that I have. Let me demonstrate the green window. Same, same window size, right? About the same window size. But now look what selects. And if you select something you don't like, hit the escape key to turn it off and try it again. So the last step I'm going to do is show you some quick dimensioning. We're not going to do all the dimensions. We're not going to dimension it just like the drawing. And to, to be perfectly honest as, as a note, the dimensions that are on a drawing like this may or may not be fully correctly placed. So you do need to follow your general dimensioning rules when you're doing dimensioning. Uh, a lot of times in textbooks, the dimensions are placed there for specific purposes or specific reasons uh, for training. And so they may not be placed in the exact proper location. So putting a dimension in is actually pretty easy. I like using the linear as opposed to the general dimension option because the linear gives me a little bit more control. So I'm going to pick, oh, I forgot to change the right layer. So we want to make sure that we're on the dimension layer before we get started. So we're going to pick linear again. I'm going to pick this corner and I'm going to pick this end. And we'll get a dimension. Now you'll say we used two decimal places but our dimensions in four decimal places. Well the dimension does not use the units command as the basis for the number of decimal places. And so we can quickly change this with it with the grip tool. So I can grip it, right mouse click, and there's an option here for precision. And I can set the number of decimal places to two. So placing a dimension is actually a pretty easy process overall. And so I can line up the dimensions, I can grip them, right mouse click, change the precision to two decimal places, and I can build my dimensions around the part. Uh, and again, in this scenario, adding the linear dimension from point to point, if a dimension doesn't look right or doesn't show up like the right value, you can always zoom in because you might not be picking the exact corner, you might be picking the other dimension. And that's a very common problem, uh, that you'll pick a, a, a dimension location as opposed to a vertical. So, And the way it'll show up is we may pick, instead of a corner, I may pick a point, but then when I do the dimension, it's going to be an odd value. So if you get a really odd value and you look at the drawing and it's like, wow, all these values are pretty even. They all got zeros or fives and I'm getting a weird number. Then obviously something didn't work out properly on the dimension process. So that's it. That gets you started with your first drawing environment. You can follow along and practice this particular drawing and uh, get started. You can also practice the dimensional environment. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.